The People's Mujahideen of Iran, PMOI, has always aimed to remove the mullahs ruling the Islamic Republic. Its original foes were the Shah and Western imperialism. The most organized of the opposition groups in exile coordinates others within the National Council of Resistance of Iran. Recently, PMOI leader and council president Mariam Rajavi drew a crowd of thousands in Paris. I think the people of Iran know very well that the Mujahideen and the Iranian resistance are at the people's side and are the real representatives of the Iranian people. They're there to resist a religious dictatorship. In spite of the PMOI's use of violent means in the past, today it is legal in the European Union. In January of this year, after a long legal struggle, the Court of Justice ruled it be taken off the EU's list of terrorist organizations. A vice president of the outgoing European Parliament explains some of the background. It is, of course, Iranians in exile who support the movement, because it's those in exile who are free to express themselves. Inside Iran itself, there is no freedom. For two decades, around 3,000 PMOI members have lived here, in Iraq, in what used to be a military base but became the Ashraf refugee camp. Ashraf is about 70 kilometers from the Iraqi capital Baghdad. The late President Saddam Hussein provided it for the People's Mujahideen when the organization supported him during the war between Iraq and Iran in the 1980s. The United States considers the PMOI as a terrorist group. In 2003, when the Americans invaded Iraq, they forced the people of Ashraf to give up their weapons. In return, they received the multinational forces protection under the rules of the Geneva Convention. Since then, the US-led troops have left this territory and the Iraqi army has taken their place. Under pressure from Tehran, the government in Baghdad could soon close Ashraf. Some of the PMOI have begun to withdraw already. Two dozen of them have been living in a hotel in the Iraqi capital for the past two months while they wait to be granted political refugee status to go to Europe. Jaffa was an intermediary between the camp authorities and the Iraqi government, but he was also a trained fighter. Celibacy was strictly enforced, men and women were separated, and while there were times in the past when he wanted to leave Ashraf, a threat of imprisonment prevented him. A former member of the PMOI, he calls into question whether there is freedom within the organization. The Ashraf authorities always told us that the Iraqi government didn't let our families come to see us. But it was not the truth. Of course, our families wanted to see us, but the Ashraf authorities wanted us to concentrate on the movement and its aims. They wanted us to love only them, to make them our gods. I did not have the right to love, or even to like this pen, because it would detract from my love of Maryam or Mezat Rajavi, the leaders of the organization. So I had to concentrate only on them. The Iraqi government says the residents of Ashraf may leave the camp if they wish, on the condition that they renounce their membership in the PMOI. No EU country has agreed yet to take in those such as Jaffa. We have heard that the Iranian authorities forgive people who come out of Ashraf, but I don't want to go to Iran. What am I going to tell my family and what am I going to tell my child? That his father was gone for 12 years and he doesn't know anything about the boy and he doesn't know anything about what happened in the world for all these years. We did not have access to any information there. We were cut off from the world. So I've decided to go to Sweden instead, to lead a normal life there. The former governor of the province in which Ashraf is situated says somewhere else must be found for its residents. All lived abroad and uh, most of us, some of them, uh, they were as, uh, what they call it, an, um, uh, asylum uh, seekers within these countries um, and some as a refugees within like Europe or the neighbor countries during the last regime. So we should look at it 
from a humanitarian reason, we shouldn't be cruel to them. We should take it in a legal way. If there is some reasons which is being accused as a criminal, or they created some harms for the Iraqi people, I'm sure I don't think anybody will blame the government to get them out. A specialist and founder of a Brussels-based geostrategic research institute describes the United States' point of view of the people's mujahideen. The Americans reacted according to an old rule, my enemies' enemies are my friends. They realize that the main opposition, the best organized against the Iranian regime, were the people's mujahideen. So for a while they thought they could use them, certainly for information about Iran, perhaps use them as a kind of special force if the time came, in the nuclear dossier. And there was a direct confrontation between Iran and the US. And then the Bush presidency changed its mind. And then another presidency came. And today we hear a totally different speech. Back to Europe. Last April, the European Parliament adopted a resolution voicing its concern over conditions in Ashraf. In my opinion, every people which uh, demand freedom and uh, human rights in Iran, uh, we should support these people uh, and uh, European Parliament and uh, European institutions uh, uh, should uh, support uh, opposition in Iran and uh, uh, Iranian uh, organization outside, uh, outside Iran. This French woman at the annual PMOI rally may explain that the group has been seeking public attention in Europe for quite some time. I'm part of the support committee for the Iranians. We're here every year to support them because their battle is something which touches everybody. I believe human rights and all that. That's why we're here. When I hear Maria Rajavi, I think there's a real Democrat, a real Republican, and that we can make Iran a real democratic nation. I think the EU and the US shouldn't get into Iranian politics. It's not for them to decide if the Mujahideen have a future in Iran. It's up to the Iranians. We'll see what they decide. In my opinion, the Mujahideen do not have a great future in Iran. Given the conditions after the recent presidential election, opposition voices inside Iran are expected to influence attitudes to the people's Mujahideen and the Iranian diaspora in general.